This is the story of Peter and the Wolf, Oregon style. Each character in this tale is represented by a different instrument of the orchestra. For instance, Billy the Bird will be played by the flute. Here's Clara the duck. Yes, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Here's Clara the duck, played by the oboe. Diva, the cat, by the clarinet. <laughs> the bassoon will represent Peter's grandfather, Grandpa Charlie. The wolf, otherwise known as OR7, <laughs> by the French horns. And of course, Peter by the strings. The blast of the hunter's shotguns will be played by the kettle drums. Perfect. All right. Are you all sitting comfortably? Let's begin. Once upon a time, early one morning in the Applegate Valley, Peter, who was a decorated Boy Scout, opened the rear gate of his yard and went out into the big green meadow. On the branch of a large Douglas fir tree, which miraculously survived the fires last year, <laughs> sat Billy the Bird, a western meadowlark from Ashland. <laughs> Billy was also Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped Billy gaily. It's a beautiful day. What could possibly go wrong?
Just then, Clara, a duck from Klamath Falls, came waddling around. Klamath was having water issues, and she had to walk all the way to the Applegate Valley. I'm a great swimmer, Clara said, but I never learned to fly. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate because she was hot and needed to swim in the cool pond in the meadow. Seeing Clara, Billy the bird, who always wanted to know everything that's going on, flew down to the grass and pointed his wing. Just what kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, Billy asked. To that, Clara replied, what kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? And she dived into the pond. What I want to know is, what kind of a bird speaks English? So they argued and argued, Clara swimming in the pond, Billy hopping along the shore. Suddenly something caught Peter's eye. He noticed a cat named Diva crawling through the long grass. The cat is named Diva because she never stops meowing, which is a polite way for saying she never shuts up. Diva thought to herself, that bird is so busy arguing, I'll just grab him. Stealthily, she crept toward Billy on her velvet paws. Look out, shouted Peter, and Billy immediately flew up into the Douglas fir. While Clara quacked angrily at Diva. From the middle of the pond. Diva walked around and around the slightly crispy Douglas fir tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get up there, the bird will have flown away. Peter's grandfather, Grandpa Charlie, came out. He was a friendly guy who always had food stains on the front of his shirt. But Grandpa Charlie was angry because Peter had gone out into the meadow. It is a dangerous place, he said. If a wolf, OR7, with a radio-controlled collar should come out of the forest, then what would you do?
thought for a moment, then shrugged. Well, I am trying to get a conflict resolution badge through the scouts. Maybe I could become friends with the wolf. Grandpa Charlie harumphed. Silly boy, I would love to see you become an Eagle Scout by winning that badge, but you can't make friends with a wolf. A wolf is mean and dangerous, and all he wants to do is kill things. He took Peter by the hand, locked the back gate, and led him home. sooner had Peter left than a big gray wolf came out. And in fact, it was OR7. In a twinkling, Diva hissed and climbed up the Douglas fir. Ha <laughs> ha, she wanted no part of that wolf. Clara quacked in horror and jumped out of the pond. Normally she would fly away, but she never learned. <laughs> OR7 turned his attention toward Clara. A bird who can't fly, he said, fascinated. Easy pickings. Clara ran for her life. She was quick, but OR7 kept getting closer and closer. Until, with one gulp, he swallowed her whole. Oh no, Billy the Bird exclaimed. What a shame you never learned to... And before she could say anything else, Diva the cat swallowed him whole, also with one gulp. That is where the expression, fat as a cat, came from.
Now, OR7 walked around and around the Douglas fir tree, looking up at Diva with greedy eyes. <laughs> In the meantime, Peter, with more curiosity than fear, stood behind the closed gate watching, wishing he could get a closer view. Suddenly, getting a great idea, Peter ran into his house, grabbed the drone that Grandpa Charlie ordered for him through Amazon Prime, and brought it out to the yard. Now he could safely get a closer look at everything that's going on. Peter booted his drone to life, but in his haste, he didn't notice that the batteries were dangerously low in power. Peter looked up, shaded his eyes, surveying the flight path between him and OR7. No trees, no power lines. It looks clear. Vroom! The rotors on Peter's brand new drone roared to life. Peter moved the joystick and launched his drone into the meadow, directly toward the wolf. <laughs> This was the first time Peter actually flew his drone, so he wasn't very good at it. The drone skimmed across the top of the pond, then buzzed right over OR7's head. Sorry, shouted Peter. <laughs> OR7 didn't appreciate being harassed by a noisy flying machine, so he decided he was going to grab it and make it stop. But even with a lousy pilot, the drone could outmaneuver OR7, and there was no way to catch it. But the drone, already low on battery power, could not fly anymore and started floating slowly toward the ground. Rats, shouted Peter. I'm a Boy Scout. I should have been prepared for this. <laughs> OR7 could finally get close to the drone. With one big jump, he reached up, put a massive paw on the annoying machine, and silenced it once and for all. That was the good news. The bad news was the fur on his paw got stuck in a rotor of the drone. <laughs> OR7 wanted nothing more than to be free of this strange thing, but it would not come off. He tried to slosh it in the pond and whack it against a tree, but nothing worked. The drone was stuck. <laughs> the wolf, Peter. 
Peter sighed. I never wanted to bother it. I gotta help. Peter spotted his trusty fishing pole leaning against the house. He grabbed it, aimed carefully, and landed the barbed hook right on top of the drone, pulling it off the wolf's paw with a single yank. The good news, OR-7 was free from the drone. The bad news, he was exhausted and collapsed to the ground. Just then, the hunters from Kirby came out of the woods. <laughs> following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. shouted, don't shoot, you might hit the wolf. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do, said one of the hunters. We're trying to kill it. We want a selfie. <laughs> Peter thought for a moment. He really wanted that conflict resolution badge. It would make him an Eagle Scout. Okay, how about this, he proposed, walking between the hunters and the wolf. If you agree not to shoot the wolf, I'll get him to take a selfie with you. The hunters laughed. Ha, ha, ha! How are you going to get him to do that? Peter turned to the wolf. Hey, OR7, if you let the hunters take a selfie with you, I'll take your radio-controlled collar off. OR7 was very surprised. Nobody ever wanted to make a deal with him. What's the catch? OR7 asked suspiciously. Well, the catch is you have to let the duck go. Ha! Is that all? OR7 burped loudly, and Clara came popping out, quacking all the way. <laughs> Peter looked up to Diva in the tree. Diva, if I help you get down, will you let the bird go? Of course, Diva meowed. I hate being stuck in trees. She burped loudly, and Billy the bird popped out, chirping happily. Thanks for helping me out, Pete, said Billy. Sure appreciate it. Peter smiled. Well, that's good, because I need a favor. Clara was eaten by OR7 because she didn't know how to fly. Can you teach her? Easy peasy, exclaimed Billy, and he flew down next to Clara to begin their first lesson. Peter climbed the tree and brought Diva down safe and sound. He had never high-fived a cat before, but he did that day. Hooray for Peter, Diva exclaimed, rubbing against his leg, purring and meowing loudly.
OR7 took a toothy selfie with the hunters. The hunters thought OR7 smelled funky, but that's okay, OR7 thought they smelled funky too. Grandpa Charlie wandered out. He had seen the whole thing. Diva brushed against his legs, still purring and meowing loudly. Peter is my hero, she announced. Peter was afraid that his grandfather would be angry, but instead, Grandpa Charlie was delighted. My boy, you diffused a potentially deadly situation. You saved the lives of a bird, a duck, and a wolf all in one day, and you gave some hunters the photo of a lifetime. Conflict Resolution Badge, which made him an Eagle Scout, and that made Grandpa Charlie very proud. The hunters posted their picture with OR7 on Facebook, and it went viral. They are currently negotiating for their own reality show. accompanied Clara back to Klamath Falls on her maiden voyage in the sky. You know, Clara, Billy said, before today, we didn't have much in common. That's right, quack Clara. Now we do. We both have been eaten alive and lived to tell the tale. What Billy and Clara both forgot was that even if a duck could fly, it couldn't go very far without resting. Look, down below, Clara said, struggling to catch her breath, a perfect resting spot, shady, near a bubbling stream. It was a perfect resting spot, all right. Perfect for all kinds of animals, even wolves, like OR7. And with one gulp, OR7 ate Clara again then headed east to the Owyhee Desert. <laughs> to this day, if you ever find OR7, which will be hard without his radio-controlled collar, and get really close to his belly, which will be even harder, you can still hear Clara's sad song inside. and the rest of them lived happily ever after.